Are you new to doll making and you're still struggling deciding the basic proportion of the head versus the body of your doll? Are you unsure why your doll looks older or a bit off, not quite the way you thought she was going to come out? The issue might be in the head proportion and to an extent on the facial proportions as well of your doll. Let's discuss. Experience is simply the name we give our mistakes. Oscar Wilde. Hello and welcome back to another video talking about doll making and natural fiber art dolls or Waldorf inspired dolls. Today I want to discuss some of the common mistakes I see when budding new doll makers start making dolls. While I've discussed this issue a few times before on my blog and my Stitchy Notes newsletter, I've never made a video about it, so I thought for some of you it would be more enjoyable or more clear to see it explained this way. I am hesitant to call them mistakes. So I put the word in quotes because they're not exactly that. After all, you didn't manage to sew on backwards, two left feet, or sculpt the bum on the front of the torso, am I right? Those we must all agree are definitely mistakes, to the tune of sewing the head backwards or giving your doll three ears, things of that nature. Well, no, of course. What I'm discussing today are not those sort of mistakes, these are more design mishaps, so perhaps they even are intentional. In some cases, I will agree that the disproportion adds to the charm of the doll design or the uniqueness of your doll style. My experience leads me to believe that more often than not, we either didn't pay extra attention or we just didn't know what to do or we were uncertain of which way to go. Trust me when I say, I have been there and I have made all these mistakes before. So I speak with an open heart. I'm not judging, I'm not being critical, I'm just trying to be helpful. Having said that, let me tell you the most common mistake I see newly sprouting doll makers make. Making a ginormous head. This one sort of makes me sad, not just because it's the most common, but perhaps the most easily avoided. In order to avoid this so-called mistake, you have to pay attention to your doll's body proportions. Having a head that is as tall in height as a torso or even longer will give you a very disproportionate doll that will look more like a toy or a cartoon than a natural fiber art doll or a Waldorf inspired doll. Or having a head that is so large as a whole that it completely overthrows the torso and makes everything else pale in comparison. Remember, we're going for somewhat realistic proportions. We are creating dolls that are somewhat inspired by Waldorf tenets, which aim to mirror the human child to some extent. If you are in the very artistic realm of doll making, then by all means disregard everything I'm saying. This does not apply to you or your work. But if on the other hand, you're in the realm of natural fiber art dolls, of Waldorf inspired dolls, then you're aiming to give your dolls a resemblance to human child proportions. So if we're trying to make dolls that mirror children and are inspired by them, let's pay attention to their proportions. You don't need to be scientific about it, just eye it, or perhaps eyeing it is what's getting you into trouble. Let's see how I can help you out. A rule of thumb goes like this, two, two and a half, three head stall for a baby doll. Please, we're talking about a doll that is meant to look like a baby, not for a baby. And by baby, I mean a child that is under one year of age. Four head stall for a toddler or young child. I happen to have three patterns that have this particular body proportion and I absolutely love them. If you make very realistic baby dolls, then you would use a four head stall proportion as real human babies have this proportion. But in doll world, we can stretch the imagination and use a two head tall, a three head tall for a baby or a three head tall for a toddler. So a four head tall would be a young child. A rule of thumb goes like this, three head stall for a baby doll, four head stall for a toddler or young child, five head stall for a child that is four to six years of age, six head stall for a six to 10 year old, seven head stall for a 10 to 16 year old. 
In your doll making, you can bend the rules. You can make a doll that is six heads tall and dress him or her like a toddler, but you will give others an impression of a younger age if you use a four or five head tall body. Let's say your doll's head is about three and a half inches tall. We're not measuring the circumference, we're measuring the rough diameter. If you were making a baby, you would have a doll about 10 and a half inches in height, a wee bit more or less due to feet, etc. One head will be the length of the torso and another head the wee baby legs because they're short and bent. This is if you go with a three head tall proportion. In the drawing, you could see that you can make a baby that is two, two and a half, three heads tall. Likewise, if your doll's head diameter is about three and a half inches tall and you're trying to make a doll that resembles, I don't know, a five-year-old, then your entire doll will be around 17.5 inches tall going with the five heads tall ratio. These are not exact numbers, of course. There is plenty of room to play, a wee bit longer torso, a wee bit longer legs, but we're using some sort of parameters. What I see way too often, and let me reinstate, I've made all these mistakes in the past, so I'm not immune here. I'm not throwing stones at anybody. Our dolls with a head height of around four inches tall and their measure 18 inches tall and they have body proportions corresponding to a child that is three years old. But then the doll is dressed like a 10 year old and the facial proportions correspond to an adult and the hair is of a toddler. You feel a total sense of disconnection because there's no rhyme or reason and so your brain doesn't know what to do. If you're designing your doll with the forehead ratio, a very common proportion, and you want your doll to be an 18 inch doll, then it goes to say that the height or the diameter of the head needs to be 4.5 inches and the rest divided between the body and legs. These dolls should be dressed like a five year old, like a very young child. Most children this age, I know, don't have super long and luscious hair and their face proportions are still quite chubby. They still look a bit like toddlers. The most common proportion for Waldorf style dolls is the five head tall ratio as Waldorf dolls are meant for children and most children start really digging into doll play around five years age. Obviously, every child is different. So if the most common dynamic is to use that five head tall ratio, then you're creating a doll that will resemble a five-year-old. If you want your doll to be 18 inches tall, then how tall must the head be? 3.6 inches, right? Because we're weird and nobody tells us what to do, especially not this box in Mexican. We can do whatever we want. We can make our doll 3.5, 3.4, 3.7. Doll making with cloth is not an exact science. Human body proportions are not exact. This is not a rule. It's my recommendation based on umpteen years of experience and many a mistake already made. Take this advice if you wish. Proceed at your own peril. Whatever you do, I encourage you to create this doll within these gentle parameters. Be mindful and intentional about what you are creating, but more importantly, who are you creating? Then think, how would a five-year-old dress? What would her interest be? What are the face proportions of a five-year-old? And then proceed. Dream, sketch, get excited with fabrics and do and make whatever your heart desires. Before you feel a rush of shame or feel bad about any so-called mistakes, if anything, I want you to know that in this path, we've all made them. We all continue to make them and the more we evolve with our pattern and our designs, the more mistakes we will make. Just remember the Sanskrit saying, there are no mistakes in life, only lessons. It's those mistakes that make us learn to pay attention and move forward. Without them, we wouldn't know a damn thing. So celebrate your mistakes. If you've been making them, that means you've been creating. And that to me is infinitely more important than making things perfect or right the very first time. But we do want progress, right? That's, we, that's why we aim for some sort of standard, just to be in the safe zone of the human realm. I truly hope my little diatribe didn't make you feel bad. It's my aim to give you a stronger wind under your wings 
to motivate you to keep moving forward and learning along my side because I'm also learning. I hope you take my words in kindness because that's how I mean them. Now, go forth and make mistakes. Lots of them. Thank you for watching my videos. See you soon.